200. Now we can hear it going at 220. That was 300. Yeah, that's about as much as a single go. Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to discuss wood, primarily wooden barrel spear guns. Many years ago when I first started, I was using an aluminum tube, non-rail, and customers were saying, why don't you make your barrels out of wood? So back in the day, I had nothing really to test it against, but I found a broomstick, roughly the same diameter. I supported it in two points, piece of string in the middle with a bunch of lead, and I measured that deflection. I then put that same mass on the aluminum tube between the same spacings and I got much less of a deflection. That is why I went down the path of aluminum. Today we do a combo carbon and timber, the timberline guns, but I thought I'd go back and revisit that. I took the same timber that we use in our timberline. This is a Sapili mahogany. It's actually ever so slightly stiffer than that of the conventional teeth that the guys use. This specific one I've machined to about 31, 31.2 in places on a lathe, sanded it down, and I'm gonna compare it with our aluminum rail. We're not gonna pull against the rail, we're gonna turn it side on, so the rail's gonna have very little difference. This is about one to one and a half millimeters thinner than that of the wood, so, Let's see the results of that. Here we have the setup. The barrel is between two rollers, same distance apart, with a strap. The strap will haul on the barrel and I'm gonna load it to about 30, 35 kilos. What I wanna do is then put a straight edge against it and see how much force I need before the straight edge is not touching the webbing. Let me load it. quite hard to get it exact. There is a straight edge. We're at 36 kilos and it's just missing the webbing. So I'll measure that gap. This is not scientific, this is just by eye. getting about 3.8 millimeters at 35 kilos. We're now gonna change it out for the timber. I have already done this, so I know the results. So I'm gonna just take it straight to the results I need to make that clearance. Same setup, same positioning. This time I'm gonna take it to 20 which is a good percentage less than that we did on the aluminium. Yeah, slightly over for now. It will settle out. So this is not an exact science, but there you can see at 23, we already have a greater gap. Correction, it looks only slightly bigger, but that just shows you more than a third less force, we're creating much more deflection. I'm gonna try a thinner walled aluminium now. The one we did just test is the standard one we use on all of our barrels. It's about 1.35 wall. This is the same profile, but thinner walled. It's only one mil.
pull that to the same of the timber and it's touching. A thinner wall and smaller diameter aluminium tube is still slightly better than that of the Sapili mahogany. What does that all mean? In my opinion, if there's any flex in the barrel, when you power that gun up and you fire it, the barrel will have an ever so slight bend under load. And the moment you release that force by pulling the trigger, that barrel is going to straighten out. It'll cause that muzzle to chop down and it'll chop down on the spear while it's getting out the muzzle. That'll create an oscillation in your spear and cause an inaccuracy and make the spear travel slower. So the stiffer you can make your barrel, the less likely you have of that chopping effect. For obvious reasons, our carbon barrels are that much stiffer again, so even less flex. Very important point for those of you who are having problems with overpowered guns, please be aware of that. Our timberline guns, where we're adding timber to the side stocks of the carbon, make it that much even stronger. Please watch our video on brake testing and loading of these tubes. You'll see it's three to four times greater than that of the aluminium. Hope you enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next. Bonus cut. Found a piece of carbon. We're going to put it in exactly the same jig, same distance apart. Don't worry about the section sticking up. The load is between the same two points as the others and will be hauled on in the middle. Let me use my elastic bands that I set up to keep it in position. Here we go. Let me take this one up a bit more. Yeah, over 40. And get the band off, out the way. Ah, not the best plan because it is longer. More or less holding it in exactly the same spacing between the two. It's actually touching the webbing. So at nearly 40, that's definitely stronger. We guesstimate at least 30% more stiffness out of the carbon compared to the standard thicker walled aluminium tube. Dimensions are exactly the same. Hope you enjoyed that.